Now I'm live. <laughs> I guess we hit our limit, Primo. Uh, maybe you'll see that I'm live and call me back. Uh, so for those of you, oh, no way. See, we were supposed to be doing a podcast. I should probably just go on the, uh, on the computer's time. Maybe I should just do a, uh, a podcast instead. I think Primo will come back. <laughs> Sorry, kids. That was uh, unexpected. I was right in the middle of a good rant, too, about Justin Trudeau. And I let my computer die. And I, I thought, see, I should have prepped for this earlier. Well, now I'm plugging in the wrong shit. I didn't know that you can't go live from desktop. Oh, I can't text them. My computer's died. Is he live now? Is Rob live? Who can check for me? Tell me if Rob's live there. Oh, is he here? Rob Primo joined. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Accept. Thanks, Primo. Now, maybe I'll... Oh, I'm now here. I get to be on top. All right. Right where I'm supposed to be. Fuck you. Hey, You're man. on bottom. You're a bottom guy. Fuck that noise. I'm on top. Hey, of I can tell how much those those Niagara politicians love you. I've been on lives with Chris Sky for hours. Anybody, but I go on with you, and they, we get shut down. You're the only person I've ever been shut down with. Well, what is? Don't you have a time limit? Yeah, is that what happened? I think it warns you when there's a time limit, though. Oh, well, no, we're at nine o'clock. So yeah, we started an hour ago. It's usually an hour, right? Okay, well, maybe we just didn't get the warning. Maybe it just shut yeah. us down. Anyways, I'm glad I'm on top now. It's where I should be. And you're in your rightful place on the bottom. That's right. Anyway, so back to what I was saying about Trudeau. I was kind of, I, I was really, I was really bummed that this happened. And like I said, I, I gave the kids some space. Like I wanted him, I wanted him to be all right. I wanted him to be a good leader, but he's been nothing but a, like an embarrassment. And... So I didn't do a lot, and then I came down here, and then I had to really force myself to do anything because I was, you know, I'm out of work and out of cash, and you know, I'm like, I, I've got work now, but I'm still like money's tight, man. It's like crazy. Yeah, yeah, tight. for sure. And uh, so I did a couple broadcasts, but I want to know what, like, what's winning look like now? Like, how do we navigate this new? Like, how do you still be effective and, and, and like, how do we win this game? Like, I, I, can we win this game? You, you know, because I talk about thankless jobs. Like, I talk and I talk and I talk. Like, but now that I have this, you know, Jordan Peterson's been a great gift in my life. Like, I studied him when he became first popular. I took all his... Mm -hmm. I listened to all his lectures online about the big five personality types. And that just, it taught me a lot about people. I didn't know you were born liberal, liberal or born conservative. You're born an artist and you color outside the lines and you're creative and there's no rules. And I, I, we love everyone. Come on, bring everyone into the country. And the conservatives are like, yeah, no, we like our rules. We like our boxes. We're not so creative, but the liberals, they don't manage businesses. They run them into the ground, but they're the entrepreneurs. They start them because they're the creative geniuses, but then they need a conservative to come in and manage it because they're the guys that go to work every day who have like strong, more like strong rules. They like their cops. They like their borders. They like the rules. They like their God. So he helped me out quite a bit, but I want to know. Uh, so this new thing, mass formation psychosis, like, this must be a concept that's been around for a long time. It's completely new to me. Yeah. And I can't believe how spot on it is. Like this is, this is the mass hypnotization of, well, let's call it North no, America. Let's call it North America. Tell me you've obviously seen the, uh, the Rogan and, and, uh, 
Dr. M Peter McCullough um, interview? I didn't watch all of McCullough because it I couldn't do it. No. I couldn't do it. Like it, it's like I know this stuff already. Yeah, I know that they yeah. fucking. I know that they burnt all the ivermectin plants down. I know that it was because of Trump. You know, but it was nice to hear it. But the more I heard, the more confirmation bias I was getting. The more I'm going, fuck. I knew it, and I couldn't yeah. handle being right. Like I couldn't yeah. handle it. Like I've been right since the beginning. I, you know the what's the family they murdered up in Scarborough? They were making ivermectin. I know who you mean. Yeah, you know, like. It was the, since the beginning, they were like, oh, fuck, no, we know what that's all about. That was, that was because they were making a cheap drug that nobody wanted them to be making or whatever. And I'm, yeah. I'm not the conspiracy theorist, but so, yeah, I, I watched enough of the McCullough thing, but I watched the Robert, Dr. Robert, what's his name? The other day, huh? I watched that whole thing because because mass formation psychosis starts trending, you know, Matty O'Dell from censored.tv starts putting it up. I'm like, what the fuck is he talking about? Like I've seen it three times now. So I got to, I knew it was from the interview, but I didn't know what it was referring to. And so that guy was really troubling, man, because again, he's confirming what we already knew. Therapeutics were absolutely demonized. Ivermectin you can buy over the counter down here for nothing. It's like 20 cents a pill. Yeah. And it fixes you. HCQ, hydroxychloroquine. Like Trump, as soon as Trump said, I bought a bunch of HCQ, they're like, it was all about Trump. Yeah. Like, Rogan, Rogan asked McCullough five times and he wouldn't answer the question. And he's like, I'm avoiding the answer. So Rogan basically says to him, was it because Trump says? He goes, well, listen, the day Trump said, the next day it was done. It was over. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You know, and I grew to like Trump. You know, I know people don't want to hear that, but he was hilarious. I like the way, I like the way he handled China. I liked, his, I liked his border policy. I liked the fact that he didn't want to fund abortions. He would draw, like... If uh, funds that went out of the country for abortion clinics, he, like, you know, like, I grew to like him. And then, like, I'm just saying, you know, I can't, I can't talk to anyone about it because people don't care, you know. So I, I want to know, like, now that we know that this, that literally the masses have been hypnotized with a lie, how do we win? Because... Maybe they answered. The, there's another conversation. I was watching it last night. I can't remember who it is, but he and this is a, a podcaster that I've never heard before. He's got the guy, I think, that invented the term mass formation psychosis. Like these yep. guys, you know, the psychologist that maybe he didn't invent it, but he's like, this is the shit. And I didn't get all the way into it. But if it's true that everyone's been hypnotized and there's nothing you can do to change their mind because facts don't matter. Like, what is it? Like, okay, I said this a year ago. I said, I'll give them another year before their personal experience is irrefutable, before they cannot look back on what they've experienced in their life and what it's cost them, what the... What the, pay, what the payoffs have been and what the sacrifices have been. And I'll give them another 12 months. And there's no excuse that 100% of the population won't be able to look back and go, oh, fuck. Yeah, we fucked that one up, didn't we? Yeah, we kept our kids out of school. Oh, yeah, we kept locking down the economy. Oh, yeah, we closed all the small businesses. Oh, yeah, kids were jumping off bridges and dying of fentanyl. We weren't. It's a distraction. It's a distraction. You know what? And it got Trump thrown out of the White House. COVID. Dude, like, you literally. want to hear something crazy? I found out from a regional... I want to say this without getting them in trouble. From a regional counselor, I know, that more people have died jumping, committing suicide and jumping off the bridge in Welland than kids under 20 in Canada with covid that sounds so crazy and so wild but that's a oh. true number because they don't oh, yeah. they don't 
put those numbers in the paper. They don't save those numbers, right? They don't want to talk about mental health, opioids, all those other issues that are going on right now, because these are all issues that are going on because of the pandemic. So they don't want to ever have to face those repercussions. You know, people who have addictions issues, the first thing they did is shut down in-person meetings, um, you know, uh, everything. And people who go to these groups and these meetings, they're comfortable talking with the people they've been doing this for years with. I've had friends of mine that one buddy of mine I knew was clean for 15 years, bro. He didn't do drugs for 15 years. So what did he do when he finally hit his breaking point? He did drugs, and, and he did the dose that he used to do 15 years ago, and he, he died from it. And, and it's all because of this. So the way I look at it is he was literally – killed by the, the system. They failed him. And well, I, I don't know if we can say this. And I've been really careful on my social media because, you know, I hear Shandor when he says I lost everything. Like, I downloaded, I asked for a request to download my Facebook data. It's 200 gigs, Rob. 200 gigs. Like, I can't even download it. It's so big. So yeah. I don't want to lose it. But here's the bottom line. The health system is on the take and it's murdering people for money from the fucking drug companies and from the government because the American government's paying people to go on a ventilator and paying them to die with COVID so everyone dies of COVID. So now, if you've watched these guys' videos too, uh, Malone or Robert, what's the last guy? Sorry, I'm, who's the last guy with Rogan? Not McCullough. The, uh, yeah, that was, was Malone? Uh, Peter McCullough. No, it was it Robert what? Oh, Malone? Robert Malone. The lot, yeah, 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 it is yeah, Malone. Yeah. Okay. Like, literally, he said it out loud, man. Like, when you pay doctors to promote a jab and all the media is funded by them. And then you ruin any doctor that suggests that there's a therapeutic that could help you, i.e. ivermectin and HCQ. How the fuck do you win this game, dude? Because there's no facts that you can show to hypnotized. So what, do they just have to get it on their own? Here's, here's God help me. God, I hope this is true. This is a literal prayer. I'm not mocking. The only hope I have, I don't know who said this to me or if it was on a podcast or whatever, but somebody said to me, Jimmy, you know why a Vax passport isn't going to matter in two years? I said, why? Because COVID's going to be gone. They always go away. They've been... We've had every killer plague that wiped out 40% of the people that were infected with it, not 1%, not less than half a percent. We always go back to normal, Jimmy. It's the, don't worry about it. It's gonna be gone. It'll be a distant memory. But, and dude, I got so hopeful. I'm like, how could I have not? I'm a positive dude and I'm a smart guy. Like, how could I not have said, ah, it's going to be fine? How could I have not invented that as a possibility? Because it is a real possibility. Now, we're working against, you know, big business here. And governments don't give back their liberties after they take them from you. And it seems like a test run for the next one that comes by, whatever it is. You know, oh, oh, so, oh, you're going to take the shot that easy? Well, we're going to put a chip in you the next time. Oh, you know, in this whole Mark of the Beast thing, I don't subscribe to that whole theory, but if you're a, if you're a God-fearing man, and I am, and I don't know the Bible that well, but I have a pretty strong faith, and like, you know, I've not always been that way. I grew up Catholic, so I wasn't always this faithful, and I struggle with it all the time. You know, I said to my men's group the other day, I'm like, I prayed the other day, I'm like, God, if you're there, and then I went, <gasps> How could you say that? They're like, Jimmy, you're not special. That's how they remind me. You're not special. We all have doubts. I'm like, oh, thank God, I'm not special. But the only <laughs> thing I have to hang on to is that. It's like, yeah. it's going to be fine because, one, people are going to wake up. 
they're going to look at their life experience and they're not going to be able to debate the fact that we fucked up. Because people will come around, but they have to come around on their own. They can't be shown evidence from you and me. They have to come to their own conclusions on it. But then I look at this, you know, and that's why I say I'm not like my Christian, some of my good Christian friends goes, this is revelation, dude. It's the beginning of the end. Like God's coming back and it's over. I don't personally think that's happening in my lifetime. <laughs> But, like, I kind of take the Bible kind of literally, you know, like, Jesus was a man. He walked this earth. Nobody's going to just say that he didn't. Now, you might not believe he was the son of man or God on earth, but Jesus was here. He was a dude, and he was pretty cool, and he did some whack shit. Now, maybe he was just the, the Chris guy of his day, not Chris guy, the, the Chris angel of his day, you know, like, just a sorcerer, just magic, you know? <laughs> but he did some wild shit, that guy. And it was no, you know, you can't say that Jesus was invented. He's not Santa Claus. But there's some of my friends that go, no, dude, this is it. First, they get you to take the dose. Then you get the mark. And you can't trade without the mark. And God comes back and it's on, game on. So I don't think we're there yet, but... I only have one hope that whoever, I wish I could remember who said it to me, but they almost said it like, what are you stupid? No, this is all going to go away because it always does. I know it seems bad now, but a couple years from now, it won't fucking matter. I'm like, it's the only hope I have now, man. So maybe that's all we have to preach. I don't know. How do we, how do we continue to be effective fighting? Because I don't want to fight anymore. I got enough court cases. I'm in a, dude, I'm so far away from the shit now. The, the only, I, I have a social media addiction. You know, I have a few addictions. Thank God they're not deadly. You know what I mean? Well, smoking <laughs> will kill me eventually, but it's not killing me tomorrow from overdose. Right. You know, and I don't talk about smoking that much, but you know, I, I struggle with that one. I even, I, I, I quit smoking weed down here. You know, I went a long time without it. And then I just, I'm trying to learn Spanish. So I'm like, I can't afford to not be clear. So, and I can't believe I don't miss it. Cause I'd smoke morning, noon and night. Like I smoke at four o'clock in the morning when I get up for a squirt and go back to bed. Just because nothing, what, what the fuck? I'm not doing anything anyway. Or if I was, I was yep. a realtor. What the fuck? I can like, I can do real estate in my office with, you know, I can't drink and, and work. That's no. So, uh, anyways, I'm rambling more than I need to be, but I wonder what it looks like. Like, how do we, how do we, how do we win this? Here I am. I think that's the point I was trying to make. Here I am in paradise, where people actually still love each other. They shake hands, they hug. There's no masking. Yeah, if you go into the major banks, yeah, I went to open a U.S. account the other day. The man with a very nice man with a shotgun. He didn't. He didn't. But. I tried to enter with my neck gaiter up to here because that's all. Nobody wears it over their nose. It's just they don't, they're just, they're, they're complying to just get by, right? Yeah. They don't. It's not, it's not doing anything. So anyways, they wouldn't let me in the bank with my neck gaiter. They made me wear a medical mask. And then they made me go like this and show them my phone to get in the door. So it looks like I had a Vax pass, you know? Like I, I pretended, got oh, I got one. I went like this, like this, like this. And I pulled up something, you know, I'm not stupid, <laughs> you know? So I got in, but other than that, life is fucking normal here, man. People love each other still. They don't care. The only people I fight about fucking COVID with are expats at the bar who are half fucking gassed. Yeah. So here I am yeah. in paradise. I can't let go of my issues, my addiction. Well, I can. I've just chosen to engage in it further. It doesn't make me a better person. But actually, you know what? I can't think of the last time that I used to get anxiety back at home because I was full on war. So before I press tweet, my heart would start fucking racing like crazy. I go, what are you doing? What are you doing this for? Is it just the drug? 
Like it's stressing you the fuck out. Why are you doing this? So I haven't got that since I've been down here, but here I am in paradise. Yeah, I can turn it off. I've done a lot to turn it off, but here they don't care. They don't care. They still love each other. And I guess it's because my family's not here. Like, I hope my baby brother comes down at some point. He's, he'll probably be out of the country soon, too, because he's always been a Florida guy. And he only came back because they locked down Florida. Yeah. And he had to get out of the country. He had to come home. But he's been stuck here, and I don't know if he's triple jabbed, but, you know, he's selling <laughs> real estate, and as soon as he pops off a couple of deals, he's gone because he's always hated Canada. I never did. I always loved it. And now... Yeah, it was very well, fortunate that I had I an opportunity it. here. I said to my men's group the other day, dude, if I had an opportunity in Dunville, I would have moved there. Yeah. But my opportunity just happened to be in Dominican Republic. And every day I'm here, and my heart breaks for you guys now with this, this last lockdown. <laughs> I'm, I hate Canada so much. I'm like, fuck, I wish I could figure out a way to get that 300 bucks from those assholes. <laughs> I uh I'll take their man, fucking would... money just to fuck them over like oh my god but like I don't I don't know I'm rambling again but uh I don't know like how we win this man or what well, it looks today like I woke, today I woke up I had messages from a few people um one lady reached out to me and they're like all right look Actually, it was after I woke up because it was after the Ford announcement. So it was like early this afternoon. She's like, I want you to know something. I got a group of moms, parents, <laughs> fathers. She's like, we've been like getting together for a long time. There's hundreds of them. They know me, but I don't know them. Now, here's the thing. We all had that line in the, in the ground, that in the sand drawn, that when you cross, you know, you crossed our line and we're about to start fighting back. Now, a lot of people's line was crossed today because anybody who has, you know, got the vax, got the second one, the booster, whatnot, been living off the vaccine passport, they just lost all that. Every single thing that they've done for two years is out the window now, and they're right back to where me and you are, these uh, quote-unquote anti-vaxxers. Now, I don't like being called that, and I'm sure you don't either, but I'm just, you know, putting it out there. After the media calls us that, well, it seems like these people are right back in the same category. They can't go anywhere. They're in a lockdown. They're shutting down the stores, and they're not allowed in them. So what the government is showing them is that these people can't do anything that we can't do. And this was essentially exactly what we've been telling them, and they've been calling us conspiracy theorists because of it, and they've been saying that's not true. So now these people got a heart full of rage and they are like we want to have huge rallies right away like we need to get this out there and i'm not even going to say where but i have had people messaging me all day uh telling me we're having a rally at this house and that house and this house and that house and and i'm like you know what good for you go get it like go go do this have fun like people are definitely um ready to take action you know um that, i don't mean like violent action like nothing like that anything i condone is a, is a peaceful resolution right um, well i think I believe, chad nailed it too and i don't agree with chad or his tactics on everything and just like i don't with you and you don't with me but i think he nailed it when he's when he just constantly says you gotta start you gotta stop complying you got to stop wearing your mask. It's easy. Like you do, taking people around. I'm sorry, Matthew. Uh, but don't think for a minute I'm not present to... Welland would usually be my choice of, even if I had an opportunity in Welland, but I'm talking to a guy from Welland, so I'm not going there. So Dunville was the next best place. So sorry, Matthew. Nothing wrong with Dunville. I'm from there, he says. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, so, yeah, United Noncompliance is the way out. And, I mean, look, when we talked about United Noncompliance, and I've been trying to get people to do that for a very long time now, 
I showed them pretty extreme examples that most people would be uncomfortable with, right? Like the going to the movies and, and going to eat in restaurants and just sitting down and not getting up and listening. Um, you know, it doesn't need to be that extreme. Today was a perfect example of noncompliance. We're not supposed to congregate with people. And I got a group of people that wanted to go tobogganing together. So we all went to a hill and like 50 people showed up and we were all going down the hill tobogganing. Okay, now all these important message. I made this post last night. All the people there, I've never seen any of these people at a protest before. These aren't anti-lockdown people. Mm. And, and I met all these people and connected today. They were chiropractors. There was one guy there that was a uh, paramedic. There was, like, these are good, reputable people who have had enough. These are people who have had their shots, and, and they want to join sides. They want to join forces. And they want to take this on together. And, and you know, unifying that is, is a big deal. And I told all these people, we're going to go back tomorrow. So now we're going to get a huge group to go back tomorrow and do the same thing. And on Wednesday, I'm going to plan like a nature walk. And we're going to get together in the masses. And we're going to go walk through nature at Short Hills. And I like, mm. want to encourage people to do this in other cities. Keep doing this. Don't send your kids to school right now to do the virtual learning because what you're doing is you're supporting the system we don't want to be a part of, right? You're showing them, well, if I sign my kids in for two weeks, we can tell these parents to go to online learning and we'll still get funded. No, don't do that. We've done that already. Take your kids out of school for a couple of weeks. Let the teachers know they're the only ones in the classroom and that they're not going to have jobs anymore if they keep doing this. And for the love of God, if you are a teacher, you better start speaking out right now. Because I work in that, that field of education, you know, as an educational assistant. I don't even work that job anymore because I spoke out so much. But you people, no offense, I don't want to come at you hard, but you're always going into the union halls and complaining about money and this and that and whatever, which is fair. I support you with whatever, but I'd like to see you fight for your children that you care for and their rights. Cause that should mean just as much to you as everything else you guys fight for. You have a very strong union and they're very vocal for you. So I would like to see you all start addressing things for the kids. Cause these kids wearing masks in your class, they do not need to be wearing them. It is straight child abuse. It's not saving them from anything. So let's see you all stand up and take a voice and, and you know, be there for your students that you, you need to love. And, and here's, here's the deal on the kids more time with you than they do their parents. So I know, I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but like, I remember these things, right. And uh, it wasn't long ago that 400 children under 18 or under in the States had died with COVID. Healthy children in the States, there's 20. 20 have died from COVID. So when you say more kids are jumping off the bridge and died in all of Canada, no, I get it. Because in all of the States, 20 healthy children died of COVID. This is like, yep. I mean, I heard this, I think it was Shapiro. Like Shapiro's like, I'm not, you know, I listen to everyone, you know? I'm really getting tired of Tim Pool, but. And I don't listen to Shapiro all the time. Gavin McInnes is my guy. But, like, this is, you can't argue this stuff. And you know what? Uh, J Cap Snaps here says, it's hard to feel compassion because a lot, of, uh, a lot of these people shunned us. Yeah, I get that. And Live 4 2020 says, we need peaceful protests in huge numbers. Like, I'm not a protester. You know me, Rob. You know, I went because... I was fond of Alicia. I thought it was shitty about what she was going through. I didn't know who she was. I said, hey, like, maybe I could introduce you. She went, oh, that'd be awesome. Because she didn't know me, but she knew I had a podcast and I had a big mouth. So it's kind of like having a semi-celebrity help you out or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I only did it just to help out. I'm not a protester. I didn't march. I drove to Dennis's place. I didn't even talk to Dennis. I stood in the background. I was in none of those pictures. I wanted none of it other than I just wanted to help out. I, I'm not a protester, but I'm telling you, that protest at Alicia's place, impressive walk through the town. That was 
fucking cool. I never expected that. And I thought there'd be yep. 30 or 40 people there. So when I went for the mic and it wasn't set up right and nobody could hear me and there was a thousand or 800 people in that parking lot, I'm like, holy, I got it. I was intimidated. But walking through that crowd, it was like sugar on my tongue. Like I missed being in a crowd of people. Who would ever think that Jimmy, like, I mean, I'm kind of an extrovert, but I can be pretty introverted too. Like I don't mind being alone, you know? Yeah, and I, when I walked through that crowd, it was like I, I was I had missed it, and so huge protests. She says, you know, we need to protest in huge numbers. It's not like I don't see how it's working. I see how it's given you a bad name. I, I see how it's got me in trouble that I can't afford to be in. I see how it's got me to be, and Shandor to be, and Alicia to be unemployable and our business is ruined. Like even as a realtor back at home, I'm doing nothing. Like, and I, you know, I'm pretty straightforward guy. When I approached these guys, I said, listen, I'm in town. I'm a realtor 25 years. I know how to do this thing. And I guess here's a couple things I'm good at, but Google my name. Because if you have, a, like I got a little bit of baggage you know, there's a lot of good stuff if you Google my name too, you know what I mean? But, and the bad stuff is kind of like fake news. It's twisted stuff. They never put it in the full context. They always make me look like a complete, like, do I look like a hate women? That, what, nobody's called anyone a fucking name before? I'm the only, I'm the first guy to call a woman a name, you know? Yeah. And so I was up front with them. So when they got this anonymous email from probably back home, they were like, well, dude was honest with us from the beginning. And, you know, they reminded me that, hey, moving forward, just remember, you represent a brand. It's not, you're not on your own. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and I, I'll be careful. I mean, I have been, but I'm not sure that the protests are helping. Like, you know what? I'm like cheering you on in my mind. I watched the whole video at, at Christine Elliott's the first time. And, I'm not sure how I feel, but, you know, but I'm fucking angry too, man. Like, don't fuck yeah. with my kids. I don't, I don't mean my kids. I mean my kids. Like, they're all my kids, you know? Yeah. Like, I love the kids. Don't fuck with the kids, man. And the kids are hurting. And then how can you look at Doug Ford standing there like this with his arms walking to Kenny? He's such a fat fuck. He can't even put his... No offense, you know, like I lost some weight, so I can I can crack now. But like I mean, <laughs> like he's just like, and again, I wasn't. I was like in the beginning, I was going. I think Ford's doing an okay job, but like, Real man, man, he's really fucked us hard and fucked the kids hard. And then he just stands there in the corner and he's like, just us, Chuck the Dancing Bear, I call him, you know. And Trudeau, yeah. the same thing. And Biden, same thing. They don't fucking answer a question. Oh, it's everything about the round table and the hell table. Like, they're just all politicians. They come out, they read their speeches. Like, this is one thing when I was in politics, I used to crush these guys on. I'm like, here he goes, reading his speeches. Because I come up and I just let it rip. You either know your stuff and you can talk to people. Yeah, you might need to have some notes so you don't forget anything. But this idea is like, we're going to be blah, 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 blah. It's, it's Hollywood for ugly people. That's what politics is. I'm stealing that from yeah, Gavin yeah. McInnes. It's Hollywood for ugly people. These people got Absolutely. no fucking chance of being an actor, so they get in politics. You know, I see Pierre Paul Yev the other day. You know, they ask these guys a question. They get up. Oh, we, they give the same answers. They never answer a question. And my fucking ear, smoke comes out of my ears. Like, it literally makes me want to do violence. Like, I know people hate to hear that, but when I see, well, I didn't want to do violence to this, but I was at Lakeport Fish and Chips, by the way. Good food. And there was a guy, and you can tell this guy was a little rough, you know? He was pushing his kid in his stroller. His kid was probably under two. And it's, you know me, I fucking, like, if there's a kid nearby, I'm on it. Like, I'm fucking, so, so I said to this kid, I said, what are you looking at, tough guy? You want to go? You think you can think you can take me or what? What are you staring at? 
like this, right? And his dad kind of laughs. I mean, I don't know who the fuck these guys are, right? But the kid's kind of, hey, you know, he's too young to even. I'm just being a dick, right? So I, I strike up a conversation with his father, and his father goes and puts a mask on him. I don't see anything. Oh. I'm, just thinking, I'm just thinking, fuck. He's taking him into Avondale. And this is like, this is a year and a half ago. This is like, you know, mask mandates to come in, whatever. So he says to me, he says, uh, well, this thing's not going away, so I might as well get him used to it now, eh? Oh, man. Just My heart broke. I couldn't yeah. say anything to the guy. I couldn't say, I couldn't say anything. I was just like, yeah, whatever. Nor, like, for me to not say something, it takes, it takes some willpower, man, because, like, it's, but it's none of my business. But yeah. it is my business when I see Chuck the Dancing Bear, that fat fucking blob of shit that, here, here's, here's how Drug Ford was elected. Well, the same way Trump was elected, a populist movement after a corrupt fucking government. Barack Obama, as popular as he was, did a lot of shitty things, man. There was no Antifa, there was no Black Lives Matter. All that shit was under Barack Obama. He's the most, and I was really into Barack Obama. I thought he was the coolest guy. But I didn't follow American politics. Same thing. The liberal government was so fucking corrupt in Ontario that we elected Doug Ford. Who the fuck is Doug Ford? You know how much money that fucking guy's making his little deco business now? And they're oh, all yeah. in the pocket of Big Pharma. They're all, like, it's Follow all fucking wrong. And after watching Robert Malone, Dr. MD, my, Robert Malone, I'm like, dude, we knew this. We knew they were getting paid to go on ventilators. Yep. We knew they were getting paid if someone died from COVID. So now that we hear it two years later and they say it on Joe Rogan, now all of a sudden, even for a guy like me, I'm like, whoa, that's powerful shit. This is not fucking new. We knew this a long time ago. So I don't know. I'm blathering again, but <sighs> crazy, man. I don't know how we win, but I don't know how you've shifted or I, I don't like, are you doing any more? You're not doing any more protests? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, I mean in front of the houses of Hirji and stuff. Uh, well, we'll have to see what happens. Uh, you know, other here's the thing about that. I'm not going to float that attention anywhere else, but I mean that wasn't even my thing, right? Somebody else did it, and I showed up to support. Okay. So I can't really speak to what other people have planned, but I mean, uh, they did go back the other day, and there was no coverage because I wasn't there. So uh, what do you think you of know? this? Sorry to interrupt. What do you think of this? Here's what my mother would say if she's here. First of all, she'd be compliant as fuck, right? But my mother was a pretty, uh, pretty wise woman. I think what she'd say is what she always said to me. Who cares who's mayor? Go sell real estate. Go make some money. Go be productive because it's the only thing that'll make you happy. Because you're not paying your bills. You're fucking protesting out on the street. So who the fuck cares? It doesn't care. It doesn't matter. You can't control who the prime minister is, who the premier is, who the mayor is. So don't waste your time running for office. Who cares? Go live your life. Let everyone else work and worry about it because it doesn't fuck. Who cares? You know, and I, I hate to get in that cycle of, because that's my act. And for anyone that knows Landmark Forum, Landmark Education, it's, it's one of the greatest courses you can take. I think it's probably now it's about a thousand bucks, but back in the day it was 500 bucks and it's a weekend in Toronto with a hundred people in a room and it's, it's life altering. It's like, I don't know how I can get caught up in all this stuff because in the end, I don't want to be the nihilist, but it's very simple to say, you know what? If a flower grows up against another flower and one dies, this one doesn't mourn it. It doesn't matter. Life is empty and meaningless. It doesn't. Here's, here's why life has meaning, because you invent the meaning. We're humans. 
We're meaning-making machines. And when we get that, we're all going to turn to dust one day, or we all go to heaven or hell, whatever you believe. I don't know. I don't have the answer on that. But who fucking cares? Because life, to, life here's, the, here's the one distinction they call it a landmark. Life is empty and meaningless, and it's empty and meaningless that it's empty and meaningless. <laughs> like, what I'm getting at is, like, are we going to get to a point where we go, fuck it. That was the old me. I'm done. Because I can't fucking change Bill Gates or Pfizer or what you think about masking your fucking 18-month-old child before you go. It's not my business. Why do I care? Why do I care? I'm not running for another election, putting myself out there. You know, I'll go to work. I'll pay the bills. You know what I think? Success is the best revenge. I get a pimp house, a nice girl, nice yeah. car. Absolutely, and I live buddy. my life on the beach. Fuck it. Yeah. It's not worth it. It's not worth fucking being obsessed with this shit anymore. You're going to definitely miss that mall cop from the beach, though, here. <laughs> Matthew Trombley? You know what? Yeah. I'm not... <laughs> I might, I might have to go play with them this summer since you're done. <laughs> <coughs> well, maybe they won't have the contract now. <coughs> I wonder if they're going to – I wonder if – I haven't heard shit about that libel suit, but apparently I do have some registered mail back home. <laughs> and I don't know if I can get somebody to pick it up for me because I'm not – I don't want to run from my shit, but I'm interested yeah. in what, what registered mail is. and. Uh, huh. Yeah, he's suing me for libel because I called him a cuck. Well, I call him a lot of things, but cuck was one of my favorite words back then. But here's the thing, too. It's like, and I've been trying to find a way to bring more of this to my podcast. It's like, I want to be a better man. Like, that's the bottom line. I want to be a bitter fucking angry guy. And it seems like everything I talk about when I do a broadcast is I'm pissed off. I'm angry. Yeah. And like... I like I, I've already acknowledged like I have hate, you know. I wish other people would say, "Yeah, I fucking got hate," and I'm trying to deal with it. No, they're like, "Oh no, I don't hate anyone." No, no, I'm like, like I think we should be a little bit more honest when it comes to that kind of stuff, you know? Like, yeah, absolutely. And who who to? Oh, Josh Denny tweeted the other day. I've introduced to introduce Josh. He's Brilliant. Stand-up comedian. He did ginormous on the Food Network, and that got canceled for, for saying something inappropriate. What did he say? Oh, fuck. It was, I can't. I just had a brain fart. I forgot where I was going. What was I talking about? It's time to go. <laughs> time to go, Robbie. Yeah, yeah I got to get going to eat anyways, brother. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, that was way too long. Well, thank you for the therapy session. Fuck, two hours? Yeah, for sure. And we'll do, when you get the, uh, when you get your show up and running and do it your way, your format. We'll no, I'm it. up and running. I set, I came down, I set everything up here. But, yeah. oh, wait, I didn't have a Zoom to, call. If anybody wants to catch out the Jim Fannin show, where can they do that? Can they add you to Instagram and then find it in your bio or no? No, nothing ever goes on my Instagram, Jim Fannin show wise. The best place to find my historical shit's on iTunes, like any, any platform that's got a uh, podcast. Like, you can go back and listen to my old shows from 610 CKTB on iTunes. Uh, my YouTube channel is called TrueTube, T-R-E-W, not like true, like true, like true, true, T-R-E-W. It's an old English word. TrueTube. And then I've got True.Tube which kind of just goes through uh, YouTube as well. And then the Jim Fannin show does have a, uh, like True Tube's got about 1150. Oh yeah, that's what I was trying to tell you. So I finally get this, this thing monetizable at 1150, like it's a thousand. And they said, I've got 920 videos and my channel has harmful content, but they won't tell you which videos. So I'll never be monetized again. <laughs> Uh, Facebook, I'm on Getter now. I've got 23 followers on Getter. Twitter's at Team Niagara. It's my old realtor account. So I had at Jim Fannin. It got up to 11,500. Gone. 
I had the Jim Fannin show got up to about 3,500. It's gone. Now Team Niagara, my old realtor account, it's up to probably about 3,000 now. I started at 1,200 a few months ago, and I haven't really been working that. I'm, inter I'm interested in Getter, G-E-T-T-R.com. That's supposed to be the Twitter killer. I'm on LinkedIn. I don't do much there. No, but usually my, go, my live show goes out to Twitter, Twitch, DLive, YouTube, and Facebook. So when I hit, like I can, I can do this right here. I'll just do it for fun. There's going to be no audio. And I recorded this all. So, so I got all the comments here because like I'm like thinking, like you don't, you don't get to watch the comments when you're broadcasting, right? Right. So, um, so I recorded it on my system here and I'm broadcasting it now. So anyone that goes to Twitch or Twitter or whatever searches the Jim Fan and show, oh, it doesn't come on to Twitter. Twitter doesn't like you broadcast anymore. Um, um, oh, okay. So you can rewatch it or whatever. I've got to record it on my my computer here, so I can rewatch the comments. But I pretty much looked at them all. So yeah, it looks like I got bandwidth issues down here too. That's weird. So yeah. Anyways, yeah, Jim Fannin show. You can find it just about anywhere. Um, yeah. So guys, if you want, if you got any questions for Jim, up in the corner here, you can uh, you can just slide that pull down menu there's my name and his name give his name jim fan and show a click give jim a follow and you can just direct message and ask him a question anyways on twitter on uh nobody's got any, he'll be able to nobody's got any questions all i got all i got the only question only suggestion they got for me is what don't talk so fucking much because we don't fucking care about all those stories just get to the good stuff <laughs> <laughs> all shut right, your buddy, mouth we'll do this again soon. All right, homie. Thanks for the uh, therapy. It was good to let loose. And yeah, it was good to uh, talk to you, buddy. I, I hope you enjoy it. Talked to Shandor the other day too, and I said uh, I like being a guest a little bit more. And I felt like tonight I was. I kind of took that kind of like I'll be the guy that's the guest. So I appreciate the opportunity, and I love you, yeah, man. Stay hard, stay golden. Don't plead guilty, but. Don't judge the boys that do. I'm going to talk to Shandor next, maybe. I think he's right, going to have... I won't, I won't do it on the Instagram. I'll do it live on the other platforms. All right, give my best to the wife and kids and uh, anyone else I care about. I love you. Maybe I'll just stay on here. I'll just keep talking to the peeps. I'm, 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 I'm right, not you. <laughs> okay, get off my channel. Fucking beat it. You know how to do that? <laughs> well, that was fun. So usually I would play this, uh, I can't do it. Facebook's live now, probably. I'm all talked out. That was two hours with Rob. All talked out. Let me see what he got here. If they had AIDS, unless they had AIDS, they got, oh shit. Well, there's a lot of comments here. NET Medicine. Jim Fannin Show. Do the dash on the can courts. Cut courts. Oh. I'm getting text messages. Yeah, I don't normally do the live broadcasts on here because I haven't figured out a way to do live broadcasting to Instagram. Huh. And it looks like I got bandwidth issues tonight. That's weird. Hmm. I wonder if it's skipping. Forget about it. Good to go. <laughs> Word of mouth gold, good one. Dean at camp? I know a Dean camp. Sorry if you're related. Tending to take temperatures. Yeah, that's what they do here. When we walk into the, I'm in the Dominican Republic for those who don't know. I got out of my country because I didn't want to get strapped, uh, trapped there. And so before they made it that you needed the shot to leave, I left. 
And that's what they do here. When you walk in the, you got to wear a, something over your, at least your mouth to get in. But they just pretend they got this little gun that they point at you, but they don't actually read it. They just go through the motions. It's, I love Dominican. Doug Ford is Ontario Tony Soprano. He's not, Tony Soprano was cool. Doug Ford's a fucking goof. Let's see how angry I am. It's not right. The babies in my daycare were crap they saw us without a mask. What? J-Cap snaps. The babies at my daycare would cry if they saw us without a mask? No, they won't. You tough guy, I want to go. Not do violence, but smoke in your ears. Yeah, I have a hard time. I'm, uh, I can't watch. J Cap Snap's been uh, active. Thank you for that. Ford Caved, you're right. J Cap again. Dude, look me up. I agree with everything you've posted tonight. Well, I mean, it's like mine. It's more like a, it's a little bit of an echo chamber out here, I guess, especially having Rob on with me. Like, I don't know what my, like Rob's up to 7,000 or something. I'm not sure how big my account is. It's probably less than two. But I'm not sure, like Rob definitely has a demographic that is supportive of this kind of stuff. I would think that my Instagram is more, I think a lot of people probably know me, like not personal friends, but I think it's a much more diverse um, like I kind of feel like Rob's increased his following a lot lately and these are probably people that support his his positions although I did see him with Chris Sky the other night and he was getting blown up in the comment section so those are probably just trolls obviously hey a couple people started following me thank you Strupal Caps is still upset. Follow me, it'll make you feel better. Yep, I'll protest together. I'm not much of a protester anymore. We're COVID doses. No, there's yeah, absolutely. The cure is way is way worse than the sickness. Surrey BC teachers do not need to be vaxxed. That's interesting. Hmm. I am live here, right? My boss was female Trudeau. Send a request home for, for homeschooling to your child's school, take them out permanently. I left my field with kids 18 years. Ouch, that hurts. Toronto rally. Hmm. Well, that was interesting and cathartic. I told uh, Matthew Rutherford, I think that's Matthew that I know. Sorry, bro. No offense to Dunville. Penny Lean Dam, thank you for the follow. Scott Kelly? What the fuck, dude? Where are you? I thought you were out west, Scott. Big, the Big Sweetie? Big, not so sweet, Mr. Kelly. I managed to get out of Toronto before the new year. Thanks for offering to help me out. Dude, I would never offer to help you out. I hate you. You're ugly. No, I'm kidding. Way to go live free. Scott Kelly, thanks for uh, chiming in. Yeah, you, you chime in on my Facebook here and there. Kukistan is a frozen hellhole. So where'd you go, Scott? Are you still on? What happened? You're still, yeah, you must be still on. We've got 11, 11 watching still. It looks like you just joined recently. Tell me, what, what, what happened? Where'd you go? Did you go south? Anyways, I'm in Dominican. I can't help you get out of Canada. 
How is Rob Primo commenting on our own feed while we're broadcasting? I wonder if the pizza place is open. It's 1019. Oh, I got a football game to watch. Okay, so I can't help you get out of Canada unless you're going to organize a charter flight. I don't know about taking the helicopter across the border to fly out of the States. I can't even believe we're having this conversation. What the fuck? You can't fly. No planes or trains without vaccination. I couldn't, I couldn't get trapped there. And I just got lucky, man. I got lucky. I was here 25 years ago. I fell in love with the people and the language and the culture and shit. I can get two pieces of fried chicken, brown rice and beans and a salad for 150 pesos on the side of the road. It's three bucks American. I get a half chicken for 250 with gravy. It's not gravy though, it's a salty mm, jus. But when you get down here, I can help. I can hook you up with a place to live. If you've got the money, I certainly can help you find one to buy. But even if you're looking to rent, I can help you out with that. Um, I got a lot of connections down here already, but not so much in the work field. Like you need to sort the work thing out. The audio is muted over here. Over there. How is my money? Audio muted. It can't be muted. There's still people watching. Scott Kelly. Uh, audio. Audio is audible. You guys are weird. How can I not have, there wouldn't be 10 people watching still if there's no sound on eight. Oh, no sound on Check. Ooh. I don't know why. No sound on Facebook or True Channel. Thank you for that. It, I got sound here. Check one, two. That's weird. Huh. Well. So it didn't sort of like, oh, you're right. Fuck. All right. Well, thanks for checking it out, dudes. I got to switch it over. I don't have a, an audio in my ear. That's weird. But I got no audio on OSB. Oh, I didn't plug OSB. Yeah, OSB is plugged in. Huh. Well, I guess I'll have to figure that out another day. Well, I was broadcasting without the audio to begin with. So this is mainly just for the uh, Instagram. Take a boat. Good. My daughter left Canada to U.S. So it's the largest school district in B.C. and you don't need to be. <laughs> I'll just swim there. No, Big Sweaty. Where'd you go, dude? Yo. Did you tell me where you left? You left. Hey, Jim. I managed to get out of Toronto before the New Year. Thanks for offering to help me out. I don't remember that. But yeah, I'm always helping out to help anyone with anything. I don't, I don't remember you asking me, but my memory's not the greatest. I'm interested to find out where you went, though. I'll touch you up on Facebook. Uh, what day is it today? So usually I come out, I don't come out here, but usually my show is when I get back to normal, when I get a strong internet connection, it'll be Thursday night, seven o'clock. Facebook, YouTube on the TrueTube channel. There's a Jim Fannin Show channel out there too. Sub to those, comment, like, I'll do all that stuff. I also have a, <clears throat> a smaller channel called You've Been Duped. Then I've got... Uh, Realtor DR, Jim Fannin, that's only real estate listings. And then I got a couple uh, Dominican channels. I'm just going to do Dominican life videos on. Um, you hear me loud and clear? I, yeah, you're not listening, obviously. For the chicken down the raisins? I moved to my fan, this condemned house, going to try and get in my name and put some work into it. Oh, good. Where's that? Tiny country home near Lake Huron. Nice. Maybe I'll be talking about chat. Living a trailer on the property. Oh, cool. 
Oh, that sounds cool, man. But it must be fucking cold. Internet slow, but works. Good for you, Scott Kelly. Miss Gero followed me. That's that's hot. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, I don't do the. I don't come out here with the lives very often. But I should figure out a way to. If I could figure out a way to tie in, like, I mean, I could plug in my cable to the phone or whatever. And trust me, you don't, like, this is how my show goes. No, this is not exactly how my show goes. This is kind of like the after party. But my show is unscripted and it's very loose. And I usually have got a couple topics I hit. Sometimes I've been trying to do Mike Emmons. The temperature is 86 every day. And it's 68 at night. So this is winter here, just like it is anywhere, I guess, except in the south. I think we're, I don't know what our, I think we're close to the equator, but apparently the, um, the summer is hot as balls. And I know like when I got down here at the end of October, you couldn't walk 20 feet without gushing. Like I'm a sweater anyways, like I don't, I don't sweat here. But like when I'm hot, I gushes everywhere. Um, when I got down here at the end of October, when did I get here? October twenty second, November, December. Yeah, I've been here two months. Just over. It was fucking hot. Even in October, it was hot, and they went twelve weeks without rain. Like it was so crispy when I got here, and still hot even in October. But now. Now that December hit in January, it cools down at night. It's like 68 degrees and it's 86, 84 to 88 degrees every day and sunny, but it's rainy season. So we got <clears throat> both like about three weeks, all of December was kind of rainy at night. All of November from from the day I landed October 22nd to November 22nd, there was not a misting of rain, not once, not at night, nothing. And then December, it rained at night a lot. And then at Christmas time, it rained like all day, all day Christmas day. <clears throat> Good to hear from you, Mikey. I commented on one of your posts today with, I don't usually leave my wall very often, but thanks live for 2020. Um, yeah, it was kind of, well, I wanted to talk to Rob and find kind of sorting things out as I go here, but I just can't, uh, I can't play the same game we've been playing because it's, well, eventually it will kill me. But getting out of Canada was a big deal. Now I just got to figure out a way that I can, you know what? Happy new year to you too, Scotty. Um, maybe that's my thing. Like, I want to feel like I, I, I'm not down here for no, no, for nothing, right? So maybe I can help people when they decide that they want to bail on their country because I never thought I would ever want that for myself. But I'm feeling for you guys. Um, I'm going to wrap this up. Yeah, but I'm just, uh, I'm torched that Chuck the Dancing Bear shut everything down. Fuck, it breaks my heart that the kids are not going to be able to go back to school and whatever, but yeah, some people say I ran away from the problem. Maybe I did, but at least I don't got to worry about the tyranny anymore. I'm being treated like a second-class citizen in my own country. I could not fucking deal with that. So when I get up and running, uh, actually, tonight's Monday night, right? Yeah, so I should have a strong internet connection Thursday night. So look for me on Facebook Thursday night, 7 o'clock. Chuck the Dancing Bear. Yeah, that's an old one from Jim. Fuck, I'm not even going to say where that came from. Pete Rayburn, if anybody knows him. Old uh, employee of my father's at Niagara Frontier Caters. I think he works for TP, probably still does. Pete Rayburn, he was married to Sandra back in the day. I had a hot... Trans Am. He came up with Chuck the Dancing Bear. I remember when I was a kid, I was working for my dad in Niagara Frontier. I was riding with Pete, 
and dude was picking his nose as he drove by. Pete yelled out the window, you can eat that! <laughs> <clears throat> but I looked up Chuck the Dancing Bear. Nobody, no one has ever, no one's ever said it before. It's like, it was not a thing. I thought maybe it was a, like a cartoon or a, a character in a movie or something like that, but as far as I can tell. Another thing. All right, so uh, yeah, if all goes well, I'll have a short show planned for you Thursday night, seven o'clock. Check it on Facebook, DLive, Twitch. I don't know, I don't know. Oh, here's the thing. I might as well pimp my services while I'm here. Um, If you know somebody that wants to invest in a little uh, condominium in the Dominican Republic, you can buy one certain at about 50K in a good location, like up the hill where I live, in the building where I live, which isn't all that bad. You can buy a one bedroom for about 60K, a studio for about 50K. There's no real estate taxes here. There are home association, home ownership fees, home uh, HOA fees, homeowner associations. So like they pay to take the garbage away and stuff like that. It's like a condo fee. But there's no realty, realty taxes. So here's the deal. I should have said this earlier. But if you send me a client that buys, I'll pay. And commission's good here. It's not like back home. I'll pay good in U.S. funds. I'll pay you just for sending me the name. Like, well, I'm not going to say how much here it is. It's no secret. 5% of GSP. So whatever the sale price is, I'll give you five points. Yeah. So on 50 grand, that's 2,500 bucks. On 200 grand, that's 10 grand. And you can get a nice little house down here for 200 Gs, American. So Jim at RealtorDR.com. Jim at RealtorDR.com. I think I'm going to get cut off anyways. So uh, thanks for all the ads. Thanks for all the comments. Uh, thanks, Rob, for uh, letting me pour my heart out. It was a good therapeutic session. Very cathartic. I love you. Peace, love, hug your neighbor, and whatever you do, rip that fucking mask off your face. I am out. That's how we do that.